Hey creatives, welcome to the second episode of the show. And today I'll be talking to my cousin, Neiman. And in this episode we catch up and you guys will actually get some insight on how I started my career. I started hearing from my best cousin, who is his guitarist, that Neiman had started making music. And given that I was taking my phone like this and then making YouTube videos, I said, hey, wouldn't that be cool to record my cousins making music? And long story short, almost three years ago now to now, he has just gotten back from the Philippines after touring there, along with my cousin Daniel, my cousin Moira, and our friends Matt Champagne and Nick Piccoli. And a few days prior to this interview, he actually had a pretty much sold out crowd at the observatory, at the Constellation Room in Santa Ana. This was a, a really big, big deal for us. So um, I hope you guys enjoy this walk down memory lane and I hope you guys draw some inspiration from his story to learn from someone who creates for solely himself. Or in his words, you cr uh, create music to... Do it for expression, not impression. There you go. Well, without further ado, here's the episode with Nina. Baby, won't you one day be who I Are you going to do it? Maybe. Ready? One, two, three. Great. 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 A creative, creative corner. corner. <laughs> it's like creepy. <laughs> That should be it. Sponsored by M and M's. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So this is okay. This this is the same issue I had with Paul. Like, yeah, because we're already friends. Yeah, like we're family. Yeah. And then also, me introducing you is gonna be the weirdest thing because I feel like it's people that are following you that would stumble on this. Like, oh, Neiman was on some guy's YouTube or or podcast thing. But how are you doing? Good. You know, you know, <laughs> be here? you know, you know. I've been avoiding like catching up with you and your queen Dan. I so we can so we can do this. So like, we just catch it on camera. Yeah. So I'm like, no, don't tell me, don't tell me about it yet. Don't tell me about yeah, it. Yeah, dude. But yeah. um, so you literally went from helping me move into the apartment here, and in two days you flew on a jet plane out to go where? Where? where went where'd to you come the from? Philippines. Like, that was crazy. Um, went to the Philippines to release um, the Knots album with Moy and do like a whole promo run. Um, that's crazy. I, I totally forgot that this was like you moving in was like like two days before we left. Yeah, that, that's what I was like because I you know I just threw out a group text or whatever and you're like oh I'm down to help. I was like no I asked Chris it's fine and Chris never showed up. I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, wow. but no, but it was cool that you were down to help out. And I know Change. you guys had big things. I'm and just happy I got to be here. Yeah. It's nice now, dude. I mean, yeah. it was nice before, but it's like now all the stuff is yeah. up and TV. Yeah. We, that was. That was a pain. Yeah. The couch. This is off the camera, but that's, it was a pain. Yeah, man. But who knew? Who knew I'd be Who here? knew, bro? I'm ready for you to ask me all the, the crazy questions. No, I mean, I've, I've it's kind of, just... I've kind of been expecting this. It's just catching up and reminiscing. If you remember, like, we've had several interviews already that I just yeah. never released. Like, it was either outside of the vlog for the doc. Like, I have a doc that I've been filming since... Dude. When was the Palette album released? 2016. 2016. Dude, That's crazy because you have footage from, like, all the way from 2016 to now. It's just, it's like, what's super surreal is, like, you even have footage of me listening to, I think planes for the first time yeah yeah and like there's just like everything you know yeah. like from writing knots from recording um from releasing palette to last in translation release party to finding the venues for to finding the venues yeah. for the last in translation party to um me and moy's last performance to now the constellation room bro <laughs> crazy bro, bro. Like, i was looking through some of the footage like that was like the five year i think like, I think it was Glass House or House of Blues. You said, like, that kind yeah. of venue. Yeah. Like, oh, I, maybe, maybe 2020 would be dope. Yeah. But maybe I never, I didn't, I never wanted to put a date on it because I was, like, I don't want to be disappointed and stuff. But, like, Constellation, you know, like, Observatory Constellation was always yeah. been. The last time I was there, I saw Masego and yeah. Daniel Caesar. Daniel Caesar, yeah. And now it's, like. And then you got to. And then next and week. And it's dope because it's not even, like, oh, I was part of, like, a 
like a lineup. It was like my show. You headlined it. Dude, we were 125 people away from selling out on a Tuesday night. But but I don't I don't even know how that wasn't sold out already. It was so packed. I couldn't like Can you imagine 120 more people in there? No. I, I, I couldn't no. get through with my camera. Yeah. You know, thank you for giving me the opportunity to film it. Bro, I it's I like, told you it, it I was like, surreal I don't for me. think of anyone else to do it. Cuz I mean, it's like what's I was like we were talking about this earlier like what's crazy is that like like we even at IHOP like cuz Rachel was like, "Oh, you guys recapped the night." And I was like, "No." Like what's nice is that like we just like we're we're so close like you me Queen Dan, Nick and Matt like at this point it's just like it's just being with homies you know mm -hmm. and it's cool to be able to like do like creative stuff with like your friends who have who are like minded you know yeah and it's cool because it's also like we've been doing this for together for so long that like we can look back on like oh shoot that's where we like were before yeah you know like crazy like yeah. even thinking like when you met matt was on for last in translation yeah it was and now like you're seeing him build like this whole light show and thing mm -hmm. and then with nick it's like you know nick does like these like these gigs like whether he's djing or he's playing piano but like like the fact that like, you know, we're like most of those songs you produced you know what yeah. I mean? it's just it's cool to like to feel like from like the first time we like started doing stuff together to now it's like we really like elevated yeah like you it, even said like freaking dude, it's it's hard for me not to get emotional about yeah. it because we palette dude went, like you you use a freaking point and shoot yeah. like i was just in the front i hogged the front and you're like i just use my kuya card even though like we haven't seen each other since probably yeah. like big big's debut yeah right and you had the um uh, a little uh yeah. the selfie gorilla yeah. card like the gorilla thing like yeah and you just like just what's that up around. what's up guys yeah. this is neiman Schoen. now you got that's like, what i was doing yeah double Got the C200 and C100. This is, it's crazy, dude. dude like yeah. I was telling you, like when you, when you and Mo, uh, Mamoy, I wish she was there, but when you and May, yeah, were, were singing, um, why do I still? Like I was getting really emotional about it because I remember at the Palette album release, that was the one that I yeah. first met May. Really, just Boy, like well, everyone met May. was able to talk to because you, you were like, Kui, I can't believe you like my music. I was like, yeah, dude. And then well, I met you, Nick. I met. I said Nick that to you day. even when you when I performed. Before Palette came out, you went to my friend's house. In Diamond Bar. And yeah, Diamond in Bar Pomona. Off Pomona. And yeah, then like Temple. it was like an intimate thing. I don't know. You came out because in Creed Dan's like, oh, is it cool if you, your Creed AJ comes? I'm like, of course. Like, is he even into my music? Yeah. He's like, yeah, dude, he really likes it. Because you like came on around like throwback love. Like, yeah. Because when you started hearing stuff. Yeah. And then, and then yeah, we were already kind of hanging out. And then Palette was like, like when we like, yeah, it started happening. Because I was already see you already showed me like note to self stuff. Yeah. Um, cause you were like, um, shooting stuff around like my neighborhood, mm -hmm. and then like geocaching and all that stuff, yeah. and then, and then palette. Um, but it's just crazy, man. Like I, I got really emotional too because, well, the whole show people were singing, and like you and know, like from all the you, shows, like yeah. nobody ever like they it's just people us. Sing. Like maybe it's our family. Yeah, but then this one was like I stopped singing and it was just like, Bro, especially on why do I still? Yeah, like, there's crazy. people in the front row that wasn't like our cousins. Yeah, like this our family was like stuck in the back. Your mom was stuck yeah. on the wall somewhere. This is the first time where it was like fans outweighed like the friends yeah. and family, and that, it's usually like all friends and family and like some fans. But this was the first time it was like the whole section was like fans, and I was like I remember like looking into that that area and I was like I don't know any of you, and that's awesome. Like, <laughs> and they're like singing every word and. This is cool, man. Like, just to, like we went from like this warehouse, you know, yeah. to like the constellation room, you know, like had a green room, like had this food. Now, theater, like, that, and that's just here, bro. You traveled like to New what York. Countries? No, I mean, other. Oh, man. Yeah, you were just in New York. Yeah. But also, in the, you weren't just in the Philippines. Seeing, no, where I else went did to the Philippines go? and then Indonesia. And um, we like linked up with Warner Music Indonesia there. That's crazy. Where, yeah. Dude, also. Um, not the spot is nominated. Yeah, best R and B. Yeah, wish track. wish best like wish R and B song of the year. It's freaking nuts. Dude. I mean, like even if we don't win, like I'm just like dude, I've just never just been nominated be mentioned, before. Yeah. yeah, and like, well, that reminded me of like when you're trending. Um, was it why do I still? Yeah, Spotify trended. Uh, Spotify US viral 50 top fifty. Charts. Yeah, and it's crazy because like I'm on there with like R and B like, um, big R and B heads like like J R. Or um, Kyla in the Philippines, yeah. and like, just to be like along those like, like those artists is like pretty, pretty crazy. <laughs> it's pretty surreal, man. It's weird, like, because I obviously, like, we did not plan this today. I I just came to hang out and <laughs> to pick and up footage, to pick up footage, and like, so I'm very. It's kind of like funny that it, like, works out this way. No, I just wanted, like, again, 
I didn't know how long I could put off. I, I'm sorry, I'm breaking the fourth wall. I'm talking to the audience. I avoided catching up with my cousins so I can make <laughs> them, I'm forcing them to do this. Dude, yeah. But yeah, I mean. I just didn't want to tell you over the phone. Like. Yeah, I know. That, that's, yeah. That's, that's not us. Like we'd literally, I remember, like I just lived down the street from you. I just moved to Ontario. Yeah, I would hit you up and like, oh, but, I got But it was like, mix, yeah. hey, Kweja, I got, you know. Um, this mix. Why do or... I still just got mixed, like mastered? Yeah. Let, come to my house. Like, we'll listen dude. to it right now. That's What a time. Those are the days. That's yeah. crazy, bro. Now it's like, dude, what's it called? Um, I think Tell Nobody is at like 700,000 or something like that. So that's about to be hit like a million soon. Yeah. And, and um, Strangers is doing well too. Like it hit like 5,000 or something like that. Yeah, you're at like, was it um, your Spotify? Like what is that thing? Like the... Spotify wrapped. Rap, you're, yeah, you're wrapped. 2018 wrapped. Yeah, like I... Like I had uh, yeah, millions two, of plays and then two million streams this 65 year. Sixty-five countries. Sixty-five countries, like, like over like a hundred thousand hours, like people are listening to my music. Like, that's insane, bro. I, it's like weird, bro, because like, I'm like, I'm, I've always just been like the cousin that sang and made music, you know, like me and Moy. But like Moy's in the Philippines and she's doing her big thing. So out, out here, it's just like, oh, it's like oh, Neiman sings, you know, like yeah. it's a thing. But like at the constellation room, it was crazy because like. It's the first time where I was like, yo, like, I'm like a real artist, you know? Because mm. then people came to see, like, like, these fans came to see me, you know? Yeah. Even seeing their posts, it was just like, oh my gosh, I found this guy on Spotify, like, years ago, and I can't believe I got to finally see him. And it was weird, because it was like, yo, like, I'm not used to that kind of, like, um, like, interest, I guess. Yeah. Because it's just always just homies and friends, like, supporting me. So seeing that was, like, just very strange. And it's like... It's really exciting, but I'm just, like, not used to it. Yeah, yeah. dude. It's still crazy. The girl, like, right in front was singing every, every yeah, day. Yeah, she was. Like, she every was. line. I remember looking around, I was like, is that one of our cousins? Or is that someone? And then everyone just, like... No. Every line, bro. Yeah. It was crazy. Every line, every song. She knew Strangers, and that just came out. And it just came out. It was, it's only been, like, four days. <laughs> or Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Yeah, three yeah. days. And, like, it was just... It's crazy, man. So, oh. like... Yeah, I just, I wanted to, yeah, I needed that. I needed for us to, like, kind of talk about. Yeah, do you ask where anything. Where from. I'm ready. You always get, like, the the, the, <laughs> the full, like, like deep answers and stuff. I mean, we'll get there. I don't want to, we can't come off, like, off the bat. I know. I'm just, like, now I'm just, like, I'm, like, ready to to dive into the deep stuff. Dude, I was watching um, Note to Self with Kui Dan, like, in the Philippines. What? Because um, we were showing our friend James, um, Moy's uh, music director. And oh, Lisa's, yeah. Like, our friend. Um, just like where, where everything came from, like where it started and all that. And it's just very surreal, man. Like, I don't know. I remember like when we finished, uh, Lost in Translation in my car, you were like, do you have any, like, do you have any like advice, advice for future, to yourself? Like, future or, 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 yeah. Or, yeah. And I was just like, make music to like express, not to impress. And, yeah. Like never compromise. And yeah, I'm there, glad to stand by that. That's crazy because um, I was listening. I think I told you right when you got here. I was like, dude, I listened to a podcast with uh, John Mary in it. And he has like this four, there's like four criteria mm-hmm. um, that he goes about like if he's going to trash a song. Yeah. Right. What uh, is he, it? Was, he was likening it. Um, he's like, you know, you know, when you throw away a crummy T-shirt, some people are like, oh, don't throw that away. But it's perfectly fine to throw it away. But then he's like, but when I talk about throwing away a song, people go crazy like you can't. But he said he has this four. I'm going to butcher it. But basically, I think what I remember is um, um, one, like, is it you? Like, does it feel like you? Um, two, um, is it like playbackable, I guess? Yeah. Um, listenable. Like, like, like listenable, you yeah. You want to go back to it. Yeah. yeah. And then, dang it, there's four. I only remember three. But those, there's those one. Two are already good. Yeah, but there's one in particular that, that he said, because he said, I, I know you can relate, um, that. If you can play it back as often as you listen to it before it's released and it's still good, it not, might not be the best anymore because you're sick of it. But if it's still good, it's going to be really good for the audience. I, th- that, that's how I feel, yeah. bro. That's how I feel about like um, everything from Lost in Translation, Tell Nobody, all of that. Because we sat, we sat with those songs for how long? Two years. Two years. We were, we were sitting with it and I remember like... I'd have like you'd give me the rough like versions of it. Uh, yeah. It's not even produced yet. That we had it's nothing. almost it just, was just vocals. Like bare bones. Dude, and I remember like me and Liz, we we love it enough for like um, we we made Nick play the piano 
for um, promise. Promise for the wedding. At, at the wedding. Yeah. But like it's not even out yet. Like we didn't even have. Uh, what did you think version. of the like of the official? I love it. I love all of it, and it, it's crazy because like just collabing with I guess other producers too. Like Big that was really cool place, having yeah. Big Hit and Jedi on there. Like it just took it to this other level. That's why I wanted to ask you, like, at least that pers- that specific thing that John Mayer said, like, if you can listen to something a lot and it's still okay, like, mm-hmm. I guess it's still good for you, is that something, like, does that resonate with you? Yeah, I mean, I, it would, like, you know this, like, I, up until I release it, I listen to it, like, all the time. Yeah. Because I'm like, is this what I want? Is this me? Is this, like, do I, do I see this as, like, representing who I am, like, as best as it could be and... You know, I, I listen to it up until I release it. And once I release it, I, like, stop listening to it. Just because I'm, like, it's done. It's out there. Yeah. You know, and um, that's a big thing for me, man. Like, if if I'm over it, like, in a week, then I'm, like, all right, this wasn't it. You know? Because yeah. I've had songs like that before where I'm, like, uh, it yeah. could be better or... Like, my favorite track. Last Time. Last Time. I love that song. But I, I, remember, I mean, I, I, I... I got you to revisit it. Yeah, you, you did. gave that to me, but then it's still, like... Well, I took some of those lyrics for... um timeless yeah and like which is which like ended up working out but mm-hmm. um yeah, yeah i mean i, I think it's for me it's like if, if i have to like really bend over backwards to feel like i have to like it and it's like i feel like people can read that you know it, yeah. like people can see oh like that wasn't like i don't know people i feel like people, people, like like your audience are the best um people in reading like if it feels like out of place or a reach or like not like um representative who you who you are you know um and that's why i I never want to force it like that was a beautiful thing about knots the whole album is that you know we had in two days it was like if we can't do it then don't force it yeah especially there you know i can't i forgot it was that quick two days and one summer was both of them it was and why him yeah yeah it was nine songs (laughs) and we sat with all those i released lost i released palette like april and then, you know, May, we just chilling. And then yeah. she came in June. And then June to, like, September, we, like, did this whole album. Do you have a favorite out of the collab with, with Moy? Do you have, like, a favorite track? Promise, I think. I have, I don't know. My, <laughs> I mean, I'm biased, though, because my best friend's, but Planes. Oh, yeah. Planes is my... Well, it's, it's interesting, because, like, for me, Promise, I just, like, like, that song is just so different. Mm-hmm. From yeah everything yeah you know and like i feel um like planes is, is an amazing story like yeah. as far as like how we wrote it where we wrote it all this stuff mm-hmm. but like i just love like i love all of our songs you know like, like good night my love was the first one and that has a special meaning and, yeah you know and and my mom really loves stay like everything has a specific, like a special place in my heart but i just really love promise just especially because that's like the closest i've ever been to like a john mayer song Cause especially like the way like Queen Dan plays on that chorus, that yeah, burr, 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 yeah, burr, burr. like it just sounds so like mayor esque. Um, but planes is special, and um, tell nobody, dude. Like, yeah, never I saw a slow jam like coming from that song, like a '90s slow jam. I have. Um, I'm gonna play the footage. Oh, I was writing. It? I, no, because um, I remember it was that box. Um, shout out to Bach. He's the one that did a lot of your vocals, right? Yeah, all of them. Vocals. Most of them, yeah. Yeah, most. Most of the songs Shout that you've ever, ever uh, released. Ever released. But I remember at his studio, we called the church. 21 Silver Fur. At church, Fur. 21 Silver Fur. Um, I know me and D-Boy were already there. Or from what I remember from the footage, I was already there. You and Moy come in, and then you say, Kui AJ, we got your favorite song. <laughs> and at the time, it was Distance. Remember, yeah. I was like, nah, nothing. Not nothing you guys write is going to be better than Distance. Yeah. And then you guys sing Tell Nobody like on the spot. It was we just piano. Like, just piano. And then we it like, was crazy, dude. And the then that story. And could you could you talk about like what what was the catalyst for you to write those lyrics? So I like wrote something before and Nick was like, nah. And I was like, oh. And then because Nick always saw that song as like he always had a vision for it. And then he was a, Nick was actually the one who came up with the dun dun dun. Yeah. Or Da, na, 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 da, da, da. like he would play that on piano he's like try this and the whole idea of the song was like for me I, I saw it as people were going through this breakup and it's like that weird part in the breakup where you're separating what's yours and what's theirs you know like 
everything was shared before and like now that's your stuff and this is my stuff you know mm-hmm. like we really wanted to explore like moving out or like eviction like that kind of those kind yeah. of like property type of like imagery you know like did our best to keep the lights on but yeah. our love was passed through yeah um or half of me is on the front From line other half is left to you yeah and so i really wanted to ex- explore like just that that moment where what was once shared is no longer shared mm-hmm. um and yeah i don't like it was just crazy because it just came together that way like because nick was just coming up with all these like um melodies yeah and, just on the keys and yeah we just like wrote down it was just really like just it was like in the in the day and then we like right after that we had the jet to Irvine. crazy now that i think about it it's like it's pretty nuts so i mean the time that that was crazy like in that amount of time you guys were able to write that much were you guys because we haven't caught up yet what it was like in the philippines were you able to write out there were you and dude yeah did you, you, you hear the song on instagram Oh, can I, can yeah, I play, it. play it? Can I play it on here? And then yeah, it? I'm, I'll put it on there. Let's see if I have it. So you and Moy wrote something, or is this your project? Um, no, it's just me and Moy. Like, we wrote this like right before I left, or like maybe like two days before we left, in classic form. We wrote this on Instagram, Instagram Live. That's like, <laughs> that's that's the car ride on the way, and then it's planes after that. Dude, right? They're finally split it was just so, That it's crazy. Yeah, bro. It, it's just like funny because like the whole time, we were together the whole, like the whole month and a half, or most of it because she had a lot of work, but mm-hmm. um, yeah, just like the three days before we left, but I'll be back in January, so <laughs> maybe we'll record it. Um, Uh-oh. But yeah, dude, it's it's just it's really like the fact that we don't have a history of writing together, and then these all these songs came out, and our chemistry works the way it does, and our and our like tone, like vocally, like works the way it does. It's just so crazy to me because it's like I don't know, like um, we we just like there's no history, you know, like there's, yeah. there's no history with that. So it's like yeah. crazy how quick it happened and. How well it works. Yeah. I think that's always surprises us. It, I think because you guys are at heart storytellers. Yeah. We are. Honestly, like... We like being a voice for people. It's awesome. Yeah. Can can we talk a... Because <laughs> I know... Um, 
every artist has some hidden <laughs> meaning yeah. in their songs. <laughs> what right? song like, are you going to ask? I don't know. That? I don't know. Like, no, just nothing specific. But, I mean, we have, like, um, I know in Timeless, um, you bring up um, Church. Uh, do you bring up... Um, Bonview. Bonview. So, that's... That's where Nick used that's to live. Nick, yeah, I, I'm down to say it. That's where he used to live, so so no one can stalk him. Yeah, and he church, used to live there, and then, and then like, that's, like, the whole idea was, like, writing on, like, it was just the thought process of, like, leaving his uh-huh. house, like, after writing a song. Yeah. Um, and and the churches, you know. The church's box place. We have other stuff, like, um, Undone since 2006, yeah. You on the Wrist. That's uh, your band from... You can see that on the camera, but... Yeah. I want to shout out the boys because I feel like I'm done. I never get shy. My best, my besties. Yeah, with his uh, band with his best friends. Yeah, it was um 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 sounded like a sounded like a boy from the six mark of my boys. It's the you on the wrist because mm-hmm. we all have the same mm-hmm. tattoo. And then we've been undone since two thousand and six. I don't think the change, but we've been boys ever since. We've been boys ever yeah. since. Yeah, it's just crazy. Yeah. Like, the shout out to, to had to. Yeah, like, even people don't know it. It's just like it's yeah. like for my friends. Yeah, and I, I think that's what makes your music special for you know, our families. Yeah, like, like that day was ones a special. You got Cruzado got to like Cruzado got to. You know, I got you. Yeah. Eleven thirty, California. I don't know if you. No, I I actually never. That's like that's learned. the address of Cornerstone. So that's your church. Yeah, eleven thirty. Oh yeah, California church. Yeah, eleven thirty. So that's why people like like. I if, just thought like it's a time. Like, yeah, if you're from Cal- if you're from uh, Cornerstone, like you'll know like. 1130 California Avenue, La Puente. Yeah. It's like, yeah. That's it's just like, it's like little things like that, you know, that yeah. like, I'm like, yeah. I, I think for me, that's what makes your music special. It's the details. Because now there's an extra layer, like that melody is dope yeah. or, you know. I, I've always wanted people to, to ask because like, I know. Have, like, dude, like, I was thinking, I was just, okay, also, did you like, last week was four years since I'm still here. Oh, yeah. Crazy. That is crazy. Crazy, bro. That's still my anthem, bro. Um, Thank you. Like that, I was listening to that song again, and I was like, "Yo, this is a, this is like has, it's crazy how that still has relevance now." Yeah, it does, and but, I think it will always. Yeah, It'll and always. it was crazy. It was like I was listening to, um, they always wondered if we'd ever last. Everlast is a boxing brand. Oh, nice. That's yeah. I was like, yeah, <laughs> you know, or like um, Th- that's size, perfect size to me have... up like a weigh in yeah. with that on my weight. Like I mm-hmm. that was all boxing. It's just like little yeah. things, and I'm like, I I was like sitting back, and I'm like, oh, like. I talked about yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, there's just little details that, like, I think you you won't know yeah. at first yeah. glance. Unless that, like, that's what sets, I mean, that's what makes people's favorite artists, like, their all-time favorite artists, I think. So when you find little things like that. Yeah. I don't know. Did you did you Dude, have, like, a... People don't notice that, like, the um, lanes, the ending of lanes is, I don't know, I don't know. To time. And then into, mm-hmm. it opens, like, that's how palette opens. Mm-hmm. Like... It was like, Queen Dan was talking about that. He's like, that's a deep cut. Like, people know like that, that they're a true fan. Yeah, you have to know the first yeah. EP, too. Yeah. That's how we opened the show. Dude, that show was sick. Was the intro I can't was... wait to, like... Because as we're speaking right now, it it is... Thursday. December Friday. 14th, Friday. This past Tuesday was the show... Three days ago. Three, three days ago. So I have all the footage. I'm still processing, man. It was dope, man. It like it was dope. Like I didn't think we would do that that soon, you know. Yeah, me too. That that's why I was like, I'm just really proud, man. That that was cool. Like for you, uh, for Nick, everything Nick's been doing lately for Yuki Dan. Yeah. Man, me and Dan. So cool I mean, like you already it. know me and That's like that was like a big goal, like to do that sh- that room and. Yeah. Like Nick did it, but he did it with Jamie Boy, and they were opening, and so like. Mm-hmm. It was special to do that with him as well. Um, I think yeah. something I want to ask you, though, along that vein, it's like uh, I spoke about this a lot extensively with uh, with Paul. But like we spoke up, we, I think we talk about this a lot, like being Filipino-American, being Asian-American. Like, was it always like this for you? Like, was there a time where you're like, OK, I'm going to do music? you know what i mean or was there were there any times where you're like oh, i don't know if this is right i don't know if this dude is right. i i i just think, just pursuing creative like passions and, and endeavors in general like it was only till maybe um 
four or five years ago. Mm-hmm. You know, like I, I was, I, you know, like I, I um, went into college trying to pursue medicine first. Yeah. Um, and then I was just like, dude, like I'm passionate about film and music. Like I can't see myself, you know, doing like something that I don't want to do for the rest of my life. Yeah. And like that being like on the side, you know, and, um, Honestly, even with music, dude, like, it was just this past maybe three months that I felt like, yo, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. Because I think a part of me was always afraid that it, if it doesn't work out, you know, I was always, I always had one foot out the door because I was always, like, afraid that if I dive in head first and like, fully commit, like, what, what am I going to do if it doesn't work out? Yeah. And it's, it's not, I feel like it's not good to, like, I mean, it's always good to have backup plans and all that stuff. But it's not good to just almost expect for it to fail. Yeah, And I feel like you do. I, I think a lot of people don't know that you have a degree in film. I do. Like you finished I you came in when job. I was in the Philippines, yeah. like the actual degree. And I was like, that was really cool. But yeah, I just, it was weird, man. Like I, with music, it was always like, I almost felt like I had, I, I had to be like, when I would tell people, like, oh, I do music, it'd be like, I do music, but I also have, I, I'm, I'm in school for film. Like, it was yeah. always, like, as if I had to apologize, you know? Yeah. And it was it's more until recently, even the show was, like, really solidified. Like, yo, like, God's opened a lot, like, he's opened up a lot of doors in music. Like, who am I to just keep pretending like he's not calling me to yeah. that, you know? And so, being Filipino-American, dude, like, I had to really unlearn, like, that your passion couldn't be your career. Like, I my, my parents really instilled just... The importance of stability because obviously you know like the philippines is a third world country and mm-hmm. you know they fought tooth and nail to get out of there and, yeah. and build a life here so i understand the opportunities that they were trying to make way from my brother and i mm-hmm. um which i'm not you know like I, i'm 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 every like bit yeah. grateful for of course you know and and but i think at like at the heart of it like what i really took away from my parents is really fighting for what you want to do and like what you uh, fighting for um fighting fighting for yourself you know and and i feel like i i that sort of work ethic that i learned from my parents i really applied to like film and music and so yeah dude being filipino american like um i think there's always this understanding like there's like a fear of the unknown yeah not having this ability because in medicine it's like there's a, a blueprint of what like of success you know like you do these things you like go to school you um graduate take t- tests all this stuff and then you're there making money mm-hmm. um i think it's like just kind of trusting that like god got me and like he's like open he's the one who's opening these doors was a really big step in like really f- like flourishing in this career because mm-hmm. for a long time i was just really just trying to just f- s- like i was just going after stability and what i felt like would be the smartest thing for me to do but it, that doesn't necessarily mean it was like where i wanted to be like what would make me happy you know yeah and so like yeah other than that realization for yourself i mean something had to motivate you to even pursue this on the side or as a hobby anyways was, well i just was there was there a cosign from somebody where you're like that this person appreciates what i make so let me keep doing this was there that one person no i mean you know to be honest i mean like I always felt like I had like I, I had a little bit of an ability to write and sing. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, like, I just didn't want to live life not feeling like I tried my best in it. You know, like that was the same thing with pursuing Rachel. Like, I didn't. It was like, yo, I told her like, if this doesn't work, pursuing you, if you don't end up liking me, then like at least I know that I tried. You know, because I, I I'd rather live with knowing that. I tried instead of like, just like, not ever, you know, um, taking a chance. And that was the same thing with music. It was just like, yo, like, let me just give this one fair shot. Let me just like do one EP and see if it works out. Let's just like go all out on this one thing. It wasn't even lanes at the time. It was like all these like songs I had written way back when. Um, and then just the people that I met from Bach to Nick to like, um, you know, Justin from from DBA, like my homie, mm-hmm. and it was just it was, like all these different people that came along the way, like just really allowed this dream to like 
just keep it's like stay alive and keep going you know like that's what's so crazy is that like i i came into this thinking like let me just do this one thing and see if it works and like it just never slowed down like mm-hmm. the trajectory has just been it just kept going up kept going up yeah but i mean i mean i want i'm gonna be honest there's been heavy bumps in the road though i can recall um even i wasn't there for it but the the lanes um ep release in uh, Fullerton. Was it the Lanes EP release in Fullerton? You had a show there, and then there's like... Oh, even that some of the homies didn't show up. Yeah, no, that was... Um, that wasn't Lanes. What was Lanes that was... One? The release party was good. Palette was good. What was but there, that? But I had a show. I think it was... Um, or was it just a show? It, it was, was just, just a show. show had. I thought it was the Yeah, I remember. I, I think it was at... Um, I forgot the venue. It was in Fullerton, though. Yeah. It's in downtown Fullerton. Yeah. Ah, oh, it's gonna it's gonna kill me. But But that that was just that show was just you and Nick. Nick and on, on I think Sarah was there too. Okay, Sarah. Okay. But I just remember I haven't actually brought that up because it's crazy going it's crazy there was a long time where I was just doing shows for like barely anyone. You know, it was just like people it was just like some homies would come out. Mm-hmm. But I would always feel just really discouraged. Just like, dude, like, is this even worth doing? You know, because mm-hmm. nobody's here. Nobody really knows my songs. Like, my songs aren't ever, like, what's trending. Like, the sound, at least. Like, which is why I'm so thankful now to see, like, yo, like, people are really, like, vibing. Because it's, yeah. like, it's never been, like, oh, it's never, like, I, I was never, like, oh, this is, like, the Trap Soul era. Or this mm-hmm. is you know, the New Jack Swing era. Like, yeah. I've always wanted to just make music that um, I liked. You know, me and Nick always were like, we just, no rules. It was, it was yeah. a big thing. Um, and so it was never like something that was just like, like it, like that everyone was just into all the time. And so I just remember in the beginning when like my numbers weren't where I wanted it to be. And like, and, and like, I, I, I always just felt like, I, I I never had like my moment, you know. I was seeing all these people around me like flourishing, hitting these numbers, getting more people at their shows, and I just felt like I was like, man, that's that's good that you brought that up. I like totally yeah. forgot about that time because I remember like Sarah was popping off too, like with his songs, and I was like super happy for him. But I was like, man, like, when am I gonna get that chance? Mm-hmm. You know, like I feel like I'm putting out good content too, mm-hmm. and like, you know, it's just it's just crazy to see like, I guess holding on to your vision and still continuing to not compromise, like, people, people take notice of that yeah. over time. And it's crazy, man, just to think, like, there was a time where, like, barely anyone was there. Even Ivan brought that up. He was like, dude, like, you know, I remember it was just me, Celine, and Rachel that came out to that show. And then everyone had their own, like, big groups and stuff, but it was just, like, us. And now yeah. you're, like, you're, like, paying a room of, like, over 200 yeah. people. And it's just, like nuts dude it's just crazy yeah I, rem- I remember we were having our time not comparing every show after the palette album release at uh footage right in brea i didn't because I, didn't I remember like to. that that was that, that was, was crazy oh my gosh we expected 75 people we were like hopefully we get 75 people hopefully like maybe 100 but i don't want to make any take any yeah. chances that was also over 200 people yeah. as well yeah, that was man. crazy man and like Wow, yeah, packed, and that's what before we knew how to do anything. So yeah. like it sucked because my I didn't have a stage, so like if you were in the back, you couldn't see anything. Yeah, you can. Um, it's just crazy, man. Like to see how far we've come. Like we had like some like, like like someone from Do Right brought this mixer, and we had to like just kind of like ask favors and stuff like that. And now it's a like, constellation. It was just yeah, crazy. constellation. We had a uh, somebody run sound. Yeah. We had you. We, we had, have lights with we Matt, had Alvin, and Nikki taking yeah. pictures. Like it was like a whole production. Yeah, it's like it's that's really what people nice were telling me the most is that like it's like a production now. People are like, so, and it's not surprising. It was just more like like you are like this this entity now. Yeah. Like you are like me with artists. And so I think it's always bigger than the last. Yeah, you know, dude, we we opened this year with with Fox. Yeah, and we're ending with Constellation with the Constellation Room. 2019, man. I'm so excited for, like, what's to come because it's, like, I'm, like, writing for a couple different artists and mm-hmm. potentially, like, doing another, like, hopefully do a tour, going to the Philippines a couple times, like. 
It, let's Pretty talk similar. about that for a little bit because that surprised me when you brought that up at lunch earlier. What? Because I remember bringing up to you, I was like, um, would you mind writing top line? And that would mean like writing melodies or writing um, lyrics for other artists. And at the time, I remember when I asked you around the time that I did the internship for El Mind. I don't know if like, like you wrote it off. Ago, huh? Yeah, it's two years ago now, man. You of, give me the, the two, three. It I, was the end of that year. <laughs> you, you, me you didn't have a resume. <laughs> you didn't have a resume. I didn't have a resume. It was a like coffee code. I saw the episode. Yeah, that that was Nick, dude. That was all Nick for me to That's get that internship. That's when you, uh, yeah, the, the, it was the episode at Coffee Code. I was working on my thesis. And then you like, and Nick sent you that text. And then I was like telling you like, you got to do this. I was and like, I think the lead helped you. At the Jan. Jan helped At the Jan helped you with your resume. And, like, you didn't know what to put on it. Yeah. Yeah, dude, that, I mean, yeah, we, we came a long way. But long I way. remember at that time, though, because I invited you, me and Nick invited, I think you went to Universal, though. But I remember bringing it up because um, they had some top line artists. Some uh, girl came and she's just, like, was humming melodies to different people's uh, beats. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, oh, that's kind of, that's kind of a cool gig. And I think at the time, like, no, nah, I, don't, I don't really want to do that. I think I... Uh, I just want to focus on writing my own music and then putting it out for myself. I just, I mean, so I was always down to write for people. I just didn't want, like, I don't think I, I, I like, embrace it as much as I do now. Because, mm. like, now, dude, I, like, I've been writing a lot of different styles and genres. And I've really, like, come, like, I've, it's just, it's nice to be able to, like, keep working and, and, and honing that craft. And, like, yeah. I feel like there's also a lot of opportunity there, you know, because I get to work with different artists that I wouldn't normally work with and, like, how, you know. how is that process, though? Like, I understand you have a sound and you have a way um, that you put string words together. I think yeah. that that's signature for me when I think about you. Um, you. Like like Strangers, dude. Like, um, how does the intro... The isn't it crazy that strangers, strangers now? Isn't it funny when you How to go and say strangers you didn't stand. We were once alive, but now we're different. How are we different? How are you? Are like you? I love that transition. So it's like, oh, thanks. How are we so different? No one's ever said that. How are you? Like yeah. you know what I mean? Like that that almost that aside. So that for me, that's your signature sound. Like you do a lot of wordplay that way. How is it trying to write for somebody else? Hard, bro. <laughs> that's crazy. Like, <laughs> it's so dude, hard. like because I'm sure I'm sure there's a key. Yeah. There's probably no, it's, a it's chord progression that you stay in. I get I mean, references. I mean, like yeah. for like these new artists, they've been giving me references of what they would want to sound like, and I just try to channel that. I'm currently trying to write. A, I'm like write, writing this like. Adele Whitney type power ballad with with Nick um, and uh, and Creed Dan and it's just like it's like for it's, really it's for an artist in the Philippines and it's just crazy because it's like like man like I have to like I think like, these are like this is like inspiration and influences that I've never tapped into before yeah and so it's it's cool though because like it's I see I, I, I like the challenge I like you know I like being able to be like all right this is this is like the f- this is the field of play, and now yeah. let me figure out you know what works where, um, and it's nice too because you know I, I I grew up in theater, and like you know like acting on on um, yeah, in theater yeah like in plays and musicals and stuff. So like having to like kind of embody like a role and like really approach like certain lines and scenes and whatnot and songs as this character yeah, it's nice to apply that to like the songwriting because it's like I'm not Neiman you know like yeah. I'm approaching this as this artist oh, or yeah. this artist. Trust me, I know how that is. <laughs> and With like, the, why do I still and why him? Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Dude, we told her about why do I still yesterday. Well, you called it out. No, but she didn't know it was about her. No way. And me, There's no me, way no me, one slipped that up. Me and Kui Dan told like, the whole story, how, how we started it, that he liked it. Okay then, so do you want to nah, tell no, no, my no, audience I'll, 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 let, I'll let him say it when, when you interview him. But... um. <laughs> But yeah, it's like that. But yeah. it's like what's crazy is like, like doing that. Like you can that. live through, yeah, I guess, the story of somebody else and tell like oh, a man. really good story. Yeah, and it's like it's nice because it's like you could really like once you're like, like that was the big thing with Nick is that, you know, Nick, Nick is R&B is his bread and butter. Yeah. That's all like that's what he knows. Yeah. And so that's why it's been exciting for him too to like have to like step outside of that yes. and like try to figure stuff out. Dude, like this, this um, when are you releasing this? First episode, January 5th. I don't know if I'm going to go every week or every other week. Oh. So. Well, I was going to, sh- like, sing you, like, a part of the song, but I don't know if I can. Because I don't, like, well, I don't know if I can. Why not? Or oh. it's, it's for someone else. Yeah, then don't. Dang. I'll show you after. <laughs> Sorry. Dude, do, like, the update video <laughs> of, like, when it's out. Yeah, yeah. Because we'll I, I have, 
we'll do. There that are four thing. albums for four artists, and I have a, I have a slot on each for like something. Wow, that's dope. Dude. Yeah, and one of them is like this like Adele type Whitney track, and it's like, oh man, it's pretty. It's gonna be pretty tight. I just like, it's one of those things where I need to really like hone it in, you know? Yeah. Um, so you got that project going on right now? Yeah, and it's cool, man. Mm-hmm. Like I, I I feel like it's it's nice to be able to like. It's not like becoming someone else, but it's nice, like, like creating these storylines, yeah. you know? Because I've always loved writing, you know, with her film and, like, you know, creating these stories and, like, of this, these characters and all this stuff. But applying that to music is so cool, you know, because it's like, there, you know, there's it, only it, so much I've experienced, so. There is one story I always wanted you to write because you made a beautiful uh, short video of it. Mm-hmm. You had a good friend of ours, RJ, star in it. And I know this... This story hits close to him. I never forgot it. I watched it once. Oh, my love goes right. Yeah. That's sad. I know. I, I'm almost crying thinking about it. Yeah. Just thinking about how close to home this, this story is. Yeah. But have you ever um, ventured into writing a story about that? Uh, through well, Good Night My Love is kind of like that. But I know the history from that one is yeah. through a like, mutual friend of Moyes. You know what's interesting is that I've never... Exp- like, I don't even know if you ever the, talked the about... The death of a loved one is yeah. like, Good Night My Love is closest. Yeah. But um, there's that one song that I was writing with that I was writing that Moy was like maybe gonna hop on, but it's like the one that's produced by Jedi. The um, holding fast to feeling. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's it's supposed to be like a heartbreak song, but it it can be seen as like because it goes it, it, um, yeah gripping tightly so I don't trust what I'm seeing. Don't believe in ghosts. But I don't think I have a choice. And it's like, it could, it could be like that. Because then the next part is, um, I'll say your name just to hear it. Yeah. And it could be seen like that, but it's like, you know, I'll let, I, I always like leaving, uh, leaving enough to the to Yeah. The for, like and the, the I, I actually love that when um, I look at some of uh, your songs on, that, yeah. that are on YouTube. And, or or I look through Twitter, especially through your voice. And people music. like have, people are like trying to dissect it. Oh, yeah. this means this. Or this is how they all. And it's like I, 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 I never. Yeah, I never want to say like nope. No, like, that's wrong. Yeah. Because like it's like yo, if that's what you took from it, then that, like yeah. then you know like it's 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 really up to, for interpretation. You know, mm-hmm. like with why do I still like everyone? Like I like leaving it open enough where it's like people can can fill in fill in like the blanks for themselves. You mm-hmm. know, like. Yeah, like I kind of lay it out, and this is like for certain songs, like this is exactly what the story is. But it's nice when people could like put themselves in the situation. You know? Yeah, no, that's that why. I mean that's what makes a song really good. That's why I rarely ever really like day one's timeless. Like I don't ever have songs that I call out very specific yeah. like references because like I always want it to be something relatable. Day ones and timeless are really the only songs where I'll, I'll shout the one out. Off, like, yeah. Yeah, I'll shout out people or like yeah, you know my homies or whatever. So, but even then, it's it's pretty cryptic. Yeah, it's eleven thirty California. It sounds like a flight home. Yeah, you know what I mean for you. Like eleven. I didn't know that you didn't know that I was. I didn't. Corso. I think maybe you told me that before. Yeah, I said that's, put where, two that's where we together. shot day once. Cornerstone, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and throwback love. Yeah. Um, so my parents met. That's where me and mm-hmm. so, um, yeah. You know what's crazy, dude? Is that like. I don't know if you're gonna edit this stuff out because I actually don't acknowledge. I I like I don't like bringing too much attention to the relationship because okay. of Moy's crazy fans. Because oh shoot, even yeah. So we might have to like edit some of this stuff out and then just save it for like way later. Okay. But like I was gonna see. I tell I I I was the one who brought her up, so that was like I guess I mean. But um, a lot of Moy's fans are like adding my family, my parents. For some reason, no. Some of them are adding me. Yeah, they're following me. But, it's, but it's, at least Facebook you have stuff with Moy. Yeah, I, mean, I like, know. Some of like my like some distant relatives are getting these friends, and like, it's just weird, bro. And so that's why I'm like, okay, like that was a big thing with Matt. It was like Matt was pushing. It was like, yo, like, try to keep, to like out of it, just because it like once you you're climbing, bro, and like once you climb more, people start to get really weird and be like, yo, this is you know, like it just gets yeah, kind of crazy. No, I I was gonna actually ask you that probably off camera. Yeah. I was gonna ask because like, um, there's one point in the Philippines, Liz got upset. My wife, it's like, how come all of, um, I don't all of 
Those pictures are gone from his Instagram and stuff. I was like, I think it has something to do with like this being a business now. Yeah. That I think it was. It a really is. I, I archived a lot of it. Um, yeah. It works with Jason and Moika. It's like they're both artists. Yeah, they're. They're, they're both celebrities. Like, there yeah, already. they're both brands. Whereas like, like it's not like anything like machine. Like, I was, like, no, obviously I post course. stuff on Facebook all the time. Yeah. It's like my personal thing. Yeah. But that was a big thing with Matt. That Matt was really teaching me. He's like, bro, like, I wasn't even in relationships, but if I started dating someone, I had fans like when he was in the Bolts at Island Apollo that would reach out to people who he's dating and be like, oh, did you know Matt said this about you? Like, you just say some weird stuff. Yeah, yeah. And like, at first I thought it was like, that's super out there. It's not going to happen. But like, um, yeah, then I, I would just it. get yeah. weird like messages, you know? And I just okay. like, it's just more of a privacy thing. I just like, you know, like I, I don't, I want to just protect my privacy, you know? Okay. Yeah. Then, then too bad for, for the viewers. I'm not going to put know. this song on. But, but it's okay. I've always wanted to sing with her. It's like, that's still something I'd love to do, you know? Yeah. And like... Anytime I reference her, I'm never going to say her name again. I'm going to say the... You can't play that either, I guess. significant other. I know I can't. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's crazy. Okay. It's crazy too because... Um, dude, she, cause she still gets... Some, somehow she's people find her and still try adding her. It's like... And it's like, it's a picture of Moyes. Like, and her, yeah, like yeah. it's a pro, the profile picture is Moyes. Yeah, no, that's Moy the Jason. weird stuff, dude. Yeah, that's why it's Where crazy. It's like, and oh, like, did Moy make another account? Yeah, and that's why I just, like, I really want to just hold, like, keep my privacy as best I can for now. Because like, I feel like it's just going to get crazier, you know. Because a long time, I mean, for you saw my, my brand for a long time was like, I was posting all this stuff. Yeah. But I took everything. Like, there's like no stuff there's in There's almost fam- no there's, personal stuff yeah, yeah, at all. It's all just music stuff. Yeah. Cause it's like it's this whole brand now, and I'd rather just like yo, I'd rather you this guys is, just like me for the music. Yeah. You know? No, this is crazy though that. Yeah. We got there. Yeah, like the fact that I have to think about that stuff is like pretty crazy. Yeah, it's. I guess it comes with it though, right? People yeah. resonating, with you, whether how awkward or. Some Which of it's nice. intense. Yeah, it's but cool. But it's like it's like it. just like for me, it's just like yo, I I just want people to like the yeah. music, me for the music. You yeah. Know? And not for like all this other stuff that's going around. Okay. Um, so yeah, there's a whole section. <laughs> I've read her book a bit, so I guess you gotta. My bad. No, that's fine. I'm, you know me. I can, I can edit. But I was gonna ask. Then I could do this. Then I want you to talk about. Um. So I pulled up Paul's Instagram. I know you did a hot ones thing. Yeah, I did. I'm totally ripping it. Let's just go to the... I'm going to go to the oldest picture. What is this? Look at that. One tattoo. <laughs> one tattoo, Neiman. One chubby, tattoo. Chubby, chubby guy. That's like over my face. Covering your face, it says uh, Atlantic Records behind you. Um, do you remember this? I, I do. What's going on? I went to Atlantic Records to... I recorded Lanes. Like the like the, the song Lanes. Like not the album, but Lanes. <laughs> and Bach was an, an intern there. Um... Or he was, I think he was an engineer there, um, not an intern. He was an engineer, and like, this is when we first kind of started working together. And he brought Nick and I, and we recorded Lanes. That was a, like, the piano in Lanes is a real grand piano. And that studio is the one, that was the only one time that I went there, but just to be able to record at Atlantic Records was like, it's yeah. crazy, man. Could we talk about Lanes, the, the song? Yeah. Because I mean, that. So, well, it's probably my, my, one of my most personal songs. Because I love the remake. Um, for the show. Thank you. That was, that was actually very that's tastefully Matt. done. Yeah. Like, that's we, very we, we, like, done. like, actually, I'll send this to you too, but, um, I had, cause I had to, um, obviously mo- the music is, is Nick playing. Yeah. So like Matt sent us like this, but this is just the did acapella. You, did you have to re-record the harmonies or everything? Just I recorded the whole, whole oh, thing. Oh, yeah, I didn't like, know like, that. I didn't know you were recording. Yeah. Cause we also raised it, so we can go oh, just scared of it all. And so, so most, with most personal song. Yeah. What is it about? Um. And do you remember where, you, like? Where were you in life? What was going on when you wrote that? Yeah, dude. I, um, so being a Filipino R&B artist is like, 
uh, you know, like it, like er, like there's like it's there are certain expectations that people have because it's like you know every like Filipino guy like who sings is is an, is an R&B, R&B singer, and for me, it just kind of touched into a lot of things. Like I, like I wanted to do like I wanted to pursue R and B as a Filipino differently than other Filipino artists you've seen before. Mm-hmm. I wanted to p- pursue R&B differently, you know. I don't curse in my music. I wanted mm-hmm. my music to be something that my mom could listen mm-hmm. to and be proud of. Um, and I wanted to sing about things that, like, were relatable and also, like, things that, like, had some sort of truth with me, mm-hmm. you know. And, like, with Lanes, like, that's the closing song on, on that on that EP. And it Lanes really just touches on, like, yo, like, if I'm going to do this, like, I'm doing it on my terms. Yeah. Like, I'm making my own lane, you know? We're all going to the same spot, but I'd rather, like, do it my way and go the way I go about it the way I want to. Um, because that's just what I feel is the most truthful to who I am, hmm. you know? And I, I just, I, I just really, like, felt at the time, like, this, it was just such a transitional time for me because I was still in school. This is the first time I was recording music, like, really, like, like actually like pursuing like making music that like you know um was closest to like like my heart and i just wanted to i just really wanted to keep myself accountable of mm. like what like why i was doing this and how i'm how i was going to do it which is why it's nice to just to be where i am now it's like yo like i got here all on my own not like by myself cuz obviously i had all these uh, had all these mm-hmm people helped me along the way but we got here on original music you know yeah. we got here on our own terms on our yeah. like our our own volition and it's it's nice to be able to be um to stand on that yeah. you know and not feel like oh i'm i stepped on someone else to get here or yeah. I'm, I'm utilizing someone else's song or whatever to get here like this is built from the ground up with like yeah. my friends you know and and um I, I don't know if you remember my my one and only like I guess stipulation for your challenge was I I never want you to do a cover. Remember? Yeah. I was like, yeah. we're never, like, if yeah. you ever ask my opinion, bro, I don't want you to do a cover because your I, songs are too good. I think I would do a cover now just because it's, it's like... It's different, yeah. It's different now, you know, where it's like I have, I, I have a, like, I'm really establishing my fan base and this at this point it's just nice to be able to do more stuff. But at the time, it was just like I didn't want to... I really wanted to build from the ground up, like, yeah. from my own music and so yeah man it was just really crazy just to be um to write that song because it was like probably the most personal like i've um written a lot of songs obviously about um myself and like relationships or whatever but this one is really like it tackled like my um I guess like the way like it, it my my thought process and mentality going into this music thing because mm-hmm. the whole album the Lane's album every song touched on like me pursuing music and who it affected whether yeah. it's my friends and family in day ones my relationships and scared of it all and and, mm-hmm. and you know right here and then and then Lane's is myself you know yeah. like and so I never wanted to like water down my vision and I never wanted to compromise who I was just for the sake of getting somewhere. Yeah. You know? And that was the beautiful thing about Lanes is that, like, I feel like all of us share some sort of, um, well, we I feel like all, all of us share that same mentality where it's, like, we got to where we are based on, like, our own terms and our mm-hmm. own rules. With you and videography or, you know, Kui Dan and his, and his guitar playing and Nick with his producing. Like, yeah. we all didn't follow, like, the rules and, like, and like the the blueprint of what you had to do and like skipped a lot of levels even nick just texted me the other day he was like because i sent him i sent the group him matt and and Gui dan like mm-hmm. the screenshot of our our nomination and i was mm-hmm. like just in case y'all forgot mm-hmm. and he texted he was like yo man like what you've been able to accomplish in the, these past couple months some people spend their whole lives trying to do yeah from traveling out of the country traveling to new york you know performing in constellation room and then getting a nomination like you know it's crazy how much we were able to do within these past months and i really attribute that to just doing things um on our own terms and not compromising dude it it, we are it didn't it felt like one domino yeah like it didn't it didn't fall like a sequence it was like 
one heaping drop just to end the year. Yeah. Like, that's the last domino to end the year. And it was crazy, man, because I told you this year, like, I was very close to just, like, putting this music on hold and just getting a job. I know. I, I remember. I was, I was remember praying for you when you um, applied for internships or jobs. Yeah, dude, after, I was playing after every school, day. I was like, and that was, like, that was the craziest thing. Is that, like, man, like, I was, like, playing every day. And I was like, God, like, I graduated. I'm applying every yeah. day. I'm being, like, like and disciplined. doing your part, yeah. And, yeah, and, like, and sending my resume everywhere and, and how are you not giving, you give, even giving me an interview? Like, yeah. I'm not getting an interview anywhere, yeah. you know? And, like, I'm, like, I've been involved. I work my way through college, yeah. all this stuff. And then I remember I had this interview with this job, this event planning job in Hollywood. And I drove there on um, Thursday morning. And it took me forever to get for there from, from yeah. Diamond Bar. And, I like, I drove there and it was, like, um, the interview went really well. He was paying, like, fairly well, but it's, like, a full-time job. And they said on event weeks they'd have to ask me for more hours. And I was like, thinking like, I guess I'm cool with that. Like at this point I need money, Yeah. you know? And then I, um, on the way home, they said, we'll, we'll let you know tomorrow, but you know, feel pretty good about it. On the way home, I was just like thinking, I was like, man, like, am I really like ready to put this music stuff on hold? Just like to save money and, yeah. you know, pay bills and all this stuff. And then um, I was just like, I guess, so. I guess that's what I have to do. Mm-hmm. You know, at least like, oh, I could move out and like, so all these different like material things, I was like, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. And then the next day they called me and they're like, hey, Neiman, um, it came down to you and someone else. Unfortunately, like, you know, we are not going to be offering you the job or we're going with the other person, but we'll let you know if we ever need help in the future. Thank you again for applying. Yeah. And for some reason, I wasn't like bummed. I was like, all right, well, yeah. you know. And then literally the next week, like literally, that was a Friday. On Wednesday, the following week, I got the call from Moy that... Um, that Targir wanted mm-hmm. to release not yeah and it was just like crazy because i was like yeah. i was like and it was like you have like, to God, come out like, here promote yeah that. and god like you orchestrated that you know because yeah. if i had this job i wouldn't be able to go out there you know like i wouldn't be able yeah. to do this and that and and just the time that was asked of me to like f- help finish productions figure out the music videos all these things like i definitely couldn't have had a job and just the thing like it's been over a year and a half like i haven't had a job and i've been like paying my bills and all this stuff is pretty surreal man and i don't know man it's just like really it's just really crazy how god really orchestrated all this and and yeah lanes is just really it was just one of those things that um it really embodied like where i where i stand with my music like i Mm -hmm. always want to make it like on my own terms you know i I don't want to follow like someone else's like formula you know just because they worked for them like i always wanted to figure it out for myself and 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 do things the way I feel is true to my myself, and so, yeah. And it's nice to yeah. be able to to share that with with you guys because it's like, yo, like it's nice to be surrounded by like minded people. Yeah, and you know that, you know, you have people around you that really support you, and they have your best interest in mind. Yeah. Because I got a I got a really nice text from Matt um, yesterday. Yeah, he's just appreciative of me helping out, being willing to film, um, help out, like tear down all that stuff. And, you know, just responded like, dude, this is my pleasure. And I just have to remind him, like, you know, you're you're helping out my family. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I'm so appreciative of him because who knows who would have signed you or yeah. who would have done something. That guy honestly who, did Who so knows much. if someone would have stole your music and then we're stuck with, like, lawyers or whatever and we just don't know. And yeah. it's so awesome to have someone that's a notch, you know, ahead of us where he's willing to mentor and, like, take care of us that way. I'm really appreciative of that. And, like, impart the wisdom from his his own experience and whatnot. Yeah, and his own time and resources. Mm -hmm. Like, that's his lights. That's, you know, his equipment. Um, Every time he drums for you is is one less time he can drum for Island Apollo or 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 whatever gigs he can do. I was just talking about that the other day, too. He was just talking about, like, just how thankful he is, like, that we were just talking about how thankful we were just to be friends. Like, yeah. So it's, it's such a blessing, dude, to be able to do this with, like, people you're close with, yeah. you know? Like, that's what I was, like, emphasizing to Rachel. I was like, man, like, we didn't talk about the show, like, once. Like, we, AJ and Queen Dan, were just, like, just talking about the syrup and just joking about, like, the <laughs> butter pecan syrup. And then Nick was making all these, like, dirty remarks with Queen Dan. And then me and, me and Matt were just laughing. And I was, like, like, mixing my food. You know what I mean? It was just, like, we were just all laughing about random yeah. stuff. And it's just... So dope that, like, you know, like, we had the craziest night of our life, like, with that show. And it's, like, the fact that, like, we could still 
just enjoy each other's company and yeah. just laugh is like I feel like it's, it's, it's it speaks volumes about who, yeah. how we feel about each other. Yeah. You and know? that you know whether yeah the only thing I want for you is like whether I'm involved like going forward you know what I mean yeah. like you can get to a level where I can't keep up. That's gonna that's the honest truth. I hope it doesn't no, happen though, man. Like, I know, but I'm but trying honestly, to like, no, get I to want, a point where I you can quit you, your job and just like that. That'll be this. cool. But I mean, what I'm saying is. I want you to be able to do what we did right after the show. Like, when it gets to a point to where, like, you look around and everyone's your assistant or... I don't know. I like, if, yeah. if it gets there, I don't want that for you. I, I just I I feel so lucky that, that the, you can count how many people are involved, like, on, like, on just, like, both yeah. hands, you know? Yeah. And, like, that's nice because it's, like, you don't have all these voices that are trying to push their agenda or... Yeah you know opinions on what you think you should do Mm -hmm. it's like the people that know you and know what you're trying to do and understand your vision and are trying to the rest of just support that and this is dope man it just i feel so blessed just to be able to like share this with you guys you Mm -hmm. know because it's not like it's not just like oh these are my friends like through music or film or whatever it's like oh these are like some of my closest friends you know and that's like it's just it makes the journey so much sweeter Mm-hmm. When you're sharing these dreams with like people that you care about, you know. So, I guess to kind of get closer to wrapping up, I think we've been talking for a while. Sorry. It's, no, it's it's been fun, and I think there's some stuff I want to hold on for like an update. Yeah. Or what we you can honestly update. use this for the freaking the doc that we have. Yeah, we could. Um, but I want I wanted to talk about um. I guess I don't like the word inspiration that much. Influence. Influence. I, I got other influence or mentors. Like, is there any, any mentors that you have in your life? Whether it's they work with you regularly, or even like you, you just look at their life and be like, okay, this is how he handles this situation, or this is how they they're able to manage this. Like, do you have any? You know, mentors? it's it's interesting. Is that like, um, I like I really look up to like, cause I'm 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 25, right? Yeah. And like I'm the youngest in the band. Like, me, Matt. Kui, Dan, and yeah. Nick. What's so dope, dude, is that, like, those are, like, I look up to those guys as mentors, mm-hmm. as Kui, as, like, yeah. as older brothers, like, with, with um, like, Nick and, like, just the way that he sees music and, like, um, just his his ability to just continue to to make moves within within his craft. Yeah. It's freaking amazing. With, with Matt and his work ethic and his professionalism, you know, with... Um, with Kui Dan and like he's helped me through so many like um just uh kind of like you know emotional things and like issues Mm -hmm. and he's really good at being just kind of the voice of reason for me Mm -hmm. and it's crazy because like I've learned so much from each of those guys Mm -hmm. like is like with Kui Dan and how to approach certain matters like that I'm, I'm 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 facing emotionally with Nick it's like how to like creatively of like of, of music I want to make that guys mm-hmm. always know what I wanted to do yeah you know and then with Matt it's like dude Matt really opened up all of our eyes to like how big we could make this yeah because back then it was just like oh let me just like you know I'll do a few songs and it's just like very stripped down or whatever we're like dude I have a light show now yeah. you know what I mean well, we never had that before yeah. I didn't even think about that yeah you know and 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 even just like um you know like getting these gigs or just doing whatever like he 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 is so instrumental in opening up our eyes to like um and widening our scope mm-hmm. you know and and i think i i'm so blessed to just be able to like work with guys that like i look up to you know and like that was the coolest thing i i remember to always think about with nick is that like i'm it's dope to be able to work with someone that i'm i'm actually a fan of you know yeah with nick i was always a fan you know and then with with matt like i mean you know i, I could talk about these guys forever but it's honestly like those three are like those those guys um they kind of cover like certain aspects of my life that like i i definitely needed like that guidance in yeah. you know from professionalism to mu- music and creative and to to just like handling hardship yeah like yeah. handling hardship and emotion and and you know like my thoughts and stuff like that mm-hmm. you know like it's just crazy to have three guys that can like cover those bases you know mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, man, it's just crazy. Like, it, 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 I was just thinking about this literally the other day because, you know, I was just telling, I was, I was venting to Kui Dan about, bless you. Um, that's Paul off camera. I was venting to Kui Dan about like an issue and he, he was just showing me this certain side and, 
And I was like, like the way he just, he like kind of worded things. I was like, yo, that's exactly like what I kind of needed to hear. Mm-hmm. And then with Nick going to New, to, like, I went to New York with Nick. It was just Nick and I. We got to like talk music and just talk about plans and all this stuff. And like, dude, that's the guy that I came came up with. You know, yeah. like how I started it. You know, like I started doing like the R and B stuff with him. Yeah. You know, and then with Matt, it's like he he was so instrumental in transitioning us from just like this like local artist to like like. A global artist bro you know? he he turned an opening act into a headliner yeah that that's as much really of an impact though, he gave. yeah and like he like oh, really it's... like he like really he like blew the door wide open mm-hmm. you know like it's it's i never saw it the way that like i never saw it like that until i started working with him mm-hmm. and it's crazy now because like i approach certain situations and um uh certain instances like in in like I, I, I approach that in like a way that like I kind of like picked up from him, you know, mm-hmm. and it's just dope because it's like, yo, I'm like learning from these guys that I look up to, you yeah. know, and it's just dope, man. Like it's those guys. Um, but at the heart of it, it's nice to take that and then like trans like translate it in my own way, you mm-hmm. know. Yeah. But even with you, man, like I've always like I've always looked up to you. Like I, I was doing this film thing for a long time, but you managed to make this a career you know and, hmm. and provide for a family with it and like you've always obviously been queer to me and it's 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 so it's such a blessing to be able to like learn and and watch you like i know you always like like throw a lot of like um like you give me a lot of credit for like like inspiring you to do all this but it's like bro like you it's it's you are a very clear example um and inspiration to me of how like you can take your passion and and creativity and make it your life mm. you know and do like like i don't know we talk about this all the time but like you were not yeah, like this was not in like the plan yeah. like a year and a half ago you no. know and now you're freaking father to like one of the cutest kids i've ever seen and like <laughs> you know your it's, husband like it's just you know it's just crazy yeah, like it's, how, it's uh know. i don't know like it couldn't have been written any better where right you could win the girl back you get married you get the house and have a kid. I don't know. And the dream. like Yeah. A, bro, you have freaking two cameras that you've been dreaming about for yeah. like forever. Yeah, this was in the five year. Yeah, dude. And it, it's, just, it's just dope. Year. Just like to think like, yo, man, you like, you made this. And that's what I'm saying is like, it's so nice to be surrounded by people like like-minded people that I look up to, you know, mm. because I don't know, like it, it's like it. Yeah, I, I just like being able to look up to these guys and feel like, yo, like. I'm with these people that like yeah. I know have got my back mm-hmm. and I could always kind of go to. Yeah. It's dope, man. I'm just like really excited for what's to come because to 2019, yeah. I think like I think we're finally going to tour and really make run with this. There's no way that we just went to the Philippines and toured, went to like I, I just went to New York and yeah. and then I'll close the constellation room and I'm not like it's yeah. not going to keep going, you know. Yeah. Like it's time to secure the bag. Yeah. Yeah, Matt, Matt has a really good game plan, so I'm excited for that, right? Yeah. It, just all of these, it's it's a, you're jumping levels and it's another notch in the belt. Another notch in the belt, dude. It's really, it's just very surreal, bro. So I'm, I'm going to ask you the same question I asked you two years ago, but this is a little different, right? What advice do you have for, maybe it's not you, but it's some guy or girl that's in pursuing something in medicine or film or something that their parents wanted them to do but there's something creative that they want to do what, dude someone asked me what this you question tell in that? new york okay we hung out and i, I literally like like what i literally what i said was like give your art a fair shot if you really feel like that's where you like like that has a, a piece of your heart mm. like give it a fair shot you know like not saying like quit your whole life and like run with it, mm-hmm. but like really give it a fair shot and, and, and you know, really um, determine if this is something that you see yourself doing for the rest of your life or you don't, you know? Mm-hmm. Like for me, I would have never pursued um, or I, I would have never had these opportunities if not for giving it a fair shake and like fair shot in the beginning, you know? Like I, I just needed to know that I did all that I could. Mm-hmm. 
And I think that people need to, to do that. If it's something just like that's a hobby, then cool. Like then it's a hobby, you know, and just do it whenever you can. But if there are people that are like, you know, on like both sides and just trying to figure out like, what do I want to yeah. do? Just like, you got to understand, like it's your parents are not going to live your life, you know, yeah. like, like only you can live your life, mm-hmm. you know? And so are you going to be okay with like, you know, 20 years from now? Um, like feeling like you should have tried mm. more. Um, I just read a, a quote from Gary Vee today, but he was like, um, I'm going to butcher it. Actually, just pull it. it up. Yeah. Like he, it was like, it, it couldn't have, it couldn't have been a better quote, but he said, roll up to that cute girl in the bar and ask her out. Roll up on that good looking dude and take him out for coffee. Roll up on your business idea and make it happen. Because being 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 and having regrets that you didn't swing the bat is the worst regret of them all. Hmm. And that was for me, man. I was, for me, it was like, I, I didn't want to be a, a dad and like to be playing guitar and my kid to be like, oh, dad, you used to sing? Like that, it was that, that was thought. Fear, yeah. That was like, yo, that's not going to happen to me. Yeah. You know, or, or dad used to be creative, used to, you know, act or something. Yeah. Or be in like theater or used to, you know, do stuff with film. Like I never wanted that to be like my life, you mm-hmm. know. And if there's anything that I wanted to impart on my kid, it was like, you can you can make your passion your career, mm. you know. And for me, that's like, I'm still like learning that, bro. Like I'm mm-hmm. still like really unlearning like the the kind of the Asian American fear of like instability in your career. Yeah. But I'd rather be doing this than unhappy in something else. Yeah. You know, and like. I think, yeah, for anyone who's, for some people who are meant for the, the medical field, and that's awesome, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I, I applaud you. But if you feel like you're being called to do different things and you feel like a part of you is, like, like you feel kind of obligated to be in one thing but you really want something else, mm-hmm. I just say, like, always oh, just give it a fair shot because you'll never know if you don't try, yeah. you know? And I hate to, like, bring up the Wayne Gretzky quote, but it's like, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So, yeah. I, I, I honestly just, I, like, honestly, like, I, like, you and I were talking about this, like, I, I think a, a year ago, that it's, like, it's crazy at one point we weren't doing this. Yeah. Like, is even, Th- like. That's my fear. That's crazy, bro. Like, think about, like, something. there's a time where you weren't filming and you were cool with being stagnant. Yeah. You know, and, and for me, it was, that's like. That's how you lose a girl, man. <laughs> true. No, but it's like, even for me, it was like, it was a time where I was like, like, or I was convinced that I like, wasn't going to do anything with music, you know? Yeah. And it's crazy now. It's like, dude, like, that's all I do, you know? It's like, write and think about, you know, like the next song and think about melodies and all these things. It's like, at one point, I was very okay with that just being like, a whatever hobby. And it's just like, I don't know. I feel... If, you, if, if someone's really passionate about something, it's just at least give it a shot, you know, because you never know. Like, you, you, you took a chance on note to self and, like, your, your like, little blog, blog that could, like, became, like, your whole career, dude, mm-hmm. you know. And for me, it's, like, it was, um, you got me, the, uh, baby, I want to. That was my first song that I recorded with, yeah. with Bach, and that was just going to be the single on, on like, an, a, an EP that I wanted to release just for fun. And then ended up like, you know, like working with Bach and Nick more like and ended up becoming Lanes, you know. Yeah. And it's just crazy because, dude, like, I, I don't know. I would have never seen Lanes, Palette, Lots of Translation, you know, like all these, you know, um, knots, like all these projects after. I would have never seen that from like that first yeah. recording, you know. So I just really feel like really give yourself a fair, fair shot at your passion. Mm. All right. That's really good advice, bro. Thanks. Do you man. have um? So where where can we find you? Um, Spotify, Neiman N I E M A N. Please continue to listen to Strangers. Um, and there's probably another song coming out. It's either gonna be yeah. Lost or called Cold War. Yeah. Um, because this is coming this is coming out in January. I'm probably gonna release a new song by then. Yeah. Also, Instagram Neiman Music N I E M A N Music, and then it's the same as Twitter. Um, and yeah. Yeah, dude. Pretty stoked, man. Yeah. 
Thank you for watching this episode of A Creative Corner. If you found any value today, please like this video, subscribe, and more importantly, join the ACC community on Instagram. That's at A Creative Corner. And that's corner without the vowels and no spacing between the words. So thank you again. And here's what's happening on the next episode. Do you, do you remember hitting a million? How old were you? Dude, this was like years ago. So I don't Honestly, like when I saw that million, I was yeah. like, oh, oh. And then that was like my reaction. Like that was it. Like I, honestly, like YouTube for me, it wasn't really like a big deal for me. It was just like I upload, people watch it. And then that's the end of that.